I'm here with Anthony Yard. It's, it's about time, you know. It's about time, because I, I see what you're doing. I know Tunde very, very well. Um, and he's told me a few stories about what happened before. You were the sole boxer that he was focused on. We won't go into any of that. I'm glad you stayed, though, because you look like you're a prodigious talent. I've spoken to a few different people in the game who are very, very excited about you. So, for those who don't know, who is Anthony Yard? Well, Anthony Yard is a, not a kid anymore, but a kid that grew up in um, the hearts of East London, Stratford, um, Forest Gate. I was born in Hackney. So, um, just a guy that's been through it, the same thing that everyone else in East London is growing up in. And um, a guy that's just trying to elevate and climb out of the little crab box. What, why boxing then, Anthony? Because most people in East London might have your narrative, might have your story, but they don't box. Um, boxing was just, I feel like that's where my path was. It's like I, w I went around in circles in different sports, but um, boxing was always something that I enjoyed to watch. I liked the entertainment part of it. It was like, almost like wrestling, but real. Because <laughs> there's an the entertainment side to it. You know, you've got your Nassim Hamid, your Matt Tysons, guys that made it entertaining, that like had character, Muhammad Ali. Um, so it was just something that I always had interest in. Did I think I would ever do it as a professional? No. I was always good with my hands, like I could fight. Um, I had punching power, I was, you know how it goes. But I didn't think it would be my profession at first. But as I got older, I started to look into it properly to say, like, I can do something like that. So when, what was it like when you had your first fight? When was that? My first ever fight was um, early, it was either the end of 2011. Yeah, it was the end of 2011. Um, I think very around December times. Um, it was a white collar fight, so it's similar to like professional boxing rules, but it's not. And then um, I had my first amateur fight shortly after that. And then um, yeah, within a year, I won the box cup, Harringay box cup. I knocked out everyone in the tournament as well. And um, yeah, the feeling, the feeling of having my first fight. The first one, I just wanted to see if I could do it. How I feel putting on gloves. It's different fighting with gloves than fighting with fist you on the road um, fighting in front of people a camera in your face because the first fight I ever had people don't know this but it was going to be shown on Eurosports so I was nervous I was nervous in a way but then I just thought to myself you know it's going to be what's going to be no one really knows who I am yet um, people box every day I don't really care um, so yeah it was good I got a, I got a first one knockout it was good was you, did you link up with Tunde from the beginning or was that a partnership that came about afterwards? It was a partnership that came about um, slightly after, just before I'd done the, the um, box cup. So I've always had like, I'm good at seeing something and imitating it. Because I used to watch a lot of Mike Tyson stand in the mirror and like copy him and say, like, I'm doing exactly what he's doing. Or I went to, my first ever um, boxing trainer was um, Tony Cissé. Um He took me through the amateurs. And um, that's the style I wanted to train in, like Mike Tyson like slipping and bam, bam, countering, etc. And then um, as I got into boxing, I realised the sweet science to it. I looked at Muhammad Ali more and realised how in early days, how he was evading punches and how he was just different. Um, and then as I got deeper into boxing, Floyd Maver came about and I was like, no, this guy's the best at it. <laughs> he don't get hit at all. So that's what I want to do. So it's like I incorporated a lot of different things into it, Roy Jones. For me, the most naturally talented boxer to live yet. Um, so, when I met Tunde, which was around 2012, um, early 2012, um, I was training with him for a bit, and then he said to me, like he wasn't really paying me that much attention, as, as he had a stable of fighters, he only dealt with professionals. So I was the only really amateur that was on the amateur scene really in the, in the mix. And he said to me, have you won anything as amateur? So I said, no. <laughs> he goes, okay, I've had a lot of people that can fight, but fighting in the ring and actually training is two different things. So he goes, you need to go and win and win something, because I'm like, I've got a lot of fighters or whatever. So I was like, okay. So I think it was June, or July, June, I think, the um, box cut was. I went and done the box cut, um, knocked out everyone, came back, bought him the, um, the medal. I said, yeah, I want a gold. I knocked out everyone. And I started laughing. And he's like, okay, okay. He still didn't really like, pay me any mind or whatever. And then we went to Vegas. Um, we went to Vegas together. Um, me, Tunde, and two other boys. And um, that's where we really got to know each other properly. We were basically living together. You see different, like, you see characteristics come out. 
everyone gets angry at one point. So, you know, um, we become a lot closer than it's like trials and tribulations you go through. And then um, we come back and I feel like going to Vegas as well showed me a different light to boxing. I was like, these guys ain't that big. It's not, it's not that different. I always thought that in my mind anyway, I was thinking to myself, whatever level I get to, um, I'm a standout. That's what I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be a standout. So actually going to America and seeing it, um, the main thing was getting to see like Floyd Mayweather train, see his work ethic. And then surprisingly, the people in his gym, their work ethic was nothing like his. So I was like, that's something I have to look at. I have to look at that. And Is that surprising? It did surprise me, but it's, it's not something that's easy to do. Like I'm, I'm trying to do my own thing now and people can't do what I do. So it's like, it's a similar thing. So I believe it's a mentality. You have to have a certain mentality to um, be a boxer that wants to be the best. Um, saying you're going to be the best is one thing and then doing it is another thing. So you, you just work towards that. Talk to me about the next four years then, because you've gone obviously from linking with Twin in 2012 to, I think you've had one fight this year, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one fight this year and um, you're 10 and 0. Yeah. Um, got a Southern Area title coming, fight coming up in a couple of weeks. Before we get to that, talk to me about the four years of development and honing your skills as a fighter. How's that been? That's been, for me, the best bit, yeah. Um, I'm a person that I'm just obsessed with progression and becoming better. So that's why you get some fighters, they win a fight or they win a title, they get complacent, they start doing like God knows what. But me, I'm the kind of person, the more I win, I want more. I want more of that feeling. So I've won this fight. How would it feel if I win in another fight? How would I, how would I feel when I win a world title? So it's like, it's a thing that keeps me grounded. So my progression stages at this stage, for me, it's just been relieving. You know, as I said, going to Vegas, um, we was training, I could say we was over training at that stage. We didn't care about jet lag. <laughs> we, we got off the plane, went straight to the gym. Um, so it's, it's things you go through and it makes you mentally shrunk. So I think to myself sometimes, when I'm tired, I'm like, I shrug my shoulders, I'm like, I've been through worse than this. Like I've pushed myself to, limits beyond so um my main stages of the early is using my because i'm very i'm very very hard-headed i'm very stubborn so i say when i want to do something i'm going to do it so i feel like that stage the stage i'm at now has been a lot of progression so i'm, I'm happy with the first four years yeah your last knockout uh against dan snow darren snow, darren snow. looked a bit brutal I'm told there's power in both hands. Is, it, is that what it is? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I would like to think I hit hard. I've, I've always had that mentality from young as well. Um, in school, I was the strongest. When I went to after school kids club, I was the strongest. I went to my friend's house, I'm the strongest. I went to my cousin's house, I'm the strongest. And Asian, I didn't care about age either. Like, I had that mentality. I wasn't ever a troublemaker or anything like that, but I'll say to myself, I always wanted to wrestle my older cousin. I always wanted to have a press-up competition with my, my, older, co my older cousin and my older siblings. Um, and I partly have my older cousin to thank for that as well. He had that kind of mentality as well, but he went on a different route. He went to prison and things like that. But because he was big, I used to, when, he, when I see him doing press-ups, I used to sit next to him and do press-ups as well. So um, I had that mentality of, I used to hear him talk sometimes and he'd be like, like I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. So I'm like, well, I'm this, I'm that. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's friendly competition, but it's like it raised me to say, whatever I'm around, I'm going to be better than it. So it's building you up, really? It's building me up. I mean, you said siblings. You got brothers, sisters? I've got um, two sisters and um, one little brother on my mum's side and my dad's side. I've lost count of how many kids he's got, if I'm honest. But for when growing up, um, it was another sister and another brother. And then along the line, I don't know how much kids he's had since then. So it will support what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, even on my dad's side, um, they come to my fights. Um, sometimes, obviously, when you're growing up, you know, it's like up and down, up and down. But as you get older, you become an adult. It don't matter what your parents say anymore. I'm in control of my life. You, um, you know, you, you grow up. You show your, you kind of show your parents to act like an adult. <laughs> Forget the problems you've had in the past. Move on and then go forward. Southern area title, what'd you make of the opponent? Um, my opponent, I haven't really, I haven't really looked at him or anything like that. 
Um, there's there's been a bit of <laughs> friendly friendly banter. Um, he, online, online. Just just he went on Box Nation. He was just saying how um, I've never been in a fight with anyone like him, etc. It's just boxing talk. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've just said to myself, for, to me, you're just another opponent. Um, we've been both respectful to each other. He's a respectful guy. He's got kids. I haven't really, I haven't got no kids, but he's got kids and a family. Um, but me, I'm, I think he's on one level. I'm looking at a whole different level. So um, I take that mind frame into the boxing as well. So I think it's, in my mind, this is just between me and my head. I see it as it's a disrespect for you to say, you're going to do this to me. You're going to take me to that round. Um, so in my mind, I'm just saying to myself, uh, we're waiting to fight now. So I've, my little friendly banners, I've been, called, I've been saying to him, um, not saying to him, but I've been saying like, um, Chris Hobbs, his name is Chris Hobbs. Yeah. I like Hobnob biscuits, <laughs> you know. So anyone at home, you can get your tea, get your biscuits. You can eat your Hobnobs. I'll have the meat in the ring. So it's like, it's a little friendly, yeah. friendly battle. You know, he's been saying, um, what happens when, I, when he punches me and when, after the fourth round, he's still there, he's not going nowhere. As I said to everyone, tune into BT Sports, tune into Box Nation, and then watch the fight and see what happens. Talking about Box Nation, I know Frank Warren um, taking you under his wing. Yeah. That must be a positive thing from your point of view that a, a man of that stature is, is backed you, supported you. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. When I done the box cut in um, 2012, Steve Bunce was there. Um, he came to me and he said, you're a stand-up fighter. Um, he's never seen anyone with such explosive strength. And he started asking me questions about my, my fighting background. I told him he didn't believe me. And he goes, um, you ever fought a turn professional? And I said, uh, at this stage, no. I'm just working on my craft. And then he said, um, Frank Warren will love you. I just pushed that to the side because that's what pe in the beginning I thought was, a lot of people are going to say things to you to try and influence your decision. But then, lo and behold, you can't move back the way of your, your water is going to, your lake is going to take you to the same destination. So, Tunde, Tunde has a great relationship with Frank Warren. So again, when I cemented with Tunde, because that's what I see it now, we're cemented together. Um, Tunde said to me, "You're ready to turn professional." I said, "No, I'm not." <laughs> he said he left it another f um, three months. He said, "You're ready to turn professional." I said, "No, I'm not." So then um, it got to a point now where mentally I was ready. And I said to him, I said to Tunde, I was coming one day, I said, let's turn professional. <laughs> and he goes, I'm going to set up a meeting with Frank Warren. And then now we're here. You're fighting on the Javante Davis, Liam Walsh bill, which is obviously going to get a lot of attention because of the Mayweather Association. Javante is a champion. Liam Walsh is, is no mark, he'll come to fight. Um, that's going to be a different level of exposure. Are you ready for that? Definitely. I feel like I'm, I was, I was even thinking about this the other day and every stage to your career is a, another piece of elevation. So I asked for, basically I asked for this. So when it comes now, I can only thank God, show appreciation by working extra hard. I won't, I'm not going to cry and complain and say to myself, oh, oh, this stage is a bit, is a bit big or anything. I thought in my eighth professional fight, I went to America and fought on the undercard of Canelo versus Smith in the at and Stadium. That stadium's considerably bigger than Wembley. So even looking at Wembley on TV, it looked massive. So at and Stadium, when you actually sit inside of the arena and you hear the noise, it's like, it's almost vibrating. Even, when I, even though I fought, I fought the first fight, sometimes that's more daunting because the arena's empty. It's just cameras. You can see who, you can see everybody. So I could see Frank Warren there. I could see um, certain people I saw, um, Bernard Hopkins, I could see Tunde's face, you can see everybody, you can hear everyone's voice as well. So it's like, that for me was a point of controlling all your emotion, controlling the atmosphere, controlling everything. So that was a big learning stage for me. So the stage coming up, even though there's probably going to be more people, for me that's better. With so much attention on this country because of the boxing champions that we had, obviously the big event at Wembley the other day, um, you're kind of learning and no one's really focusing on you. Yeah. Is that a good thing or a bad thing from your perspective? Um, a, a, I would say everything's good and I feel like everything's timing and my path is my path and so far, and it's going to continue to go this way, positive man, you've got to always think positive, 
is everything for me has just been timing. Um, I came into boxing for me at the right time. Um, I won the box cup at the right time, turned professional at the right time, had certain fights at the right time. Um, so the attention that boxing is getting right now, for me again, is at the right time. Um, I'm going into the stages where I'm fighting for my first title. Um, everything for me, the first of everything has been special to me. So my pro debut, I said to myself, I, I, need to, I want to win my knockout. <clears throat> I accomplished it. Um, my first fight abroad, I said I want it to be in America. Again, like things, certain things that have happened, um, people are like, oh, how, does, how has that happened? Like, he's, had a, he's had no amateur background. Um, he didn't go to Olympics. He didn't, go to, he didn't even go to the ABAs. He didn't even win you know, ABAs or nothing. So the, my first of everything has been, for me, at the roof. Um, my sponsors, I'm sponsored by Maxi Muscle, the best nutritional company in England. Um, I've got Box Nation behind me. I'm signed to Frank Warren my, for my first professional fight without having any other fights before that. I've got, for me, the best trainer in the world, um, Tunde Ajayi. People always say, oh, um, this person's got that ranking as a trainer. But for me, Tunde Ajayi is the best trainer in the world. Um, so, so far, everything's just been fantastic. Let's assume you win that title because I've interviewed enough boxers to know that they don't think any other way. So you've already won the title in your mind. I know you've got to go and do it. How did the next 10 fights go? What are the targets? What are the ambitions for that period of your career? Well, um, targets and ambitions, that's something I really keep tuning into myself um, and I work towards it day by day. But all I'm focused on right now is May 20th, I'm winning that Southern Area title. And then I take each fight as it comes. I think a lot of fighters do that. I've, it's like, I've got an I've got a, a image in my head of where I want to get to, but every stage to get to that stage is one stage at a time. It's like building blocks. You, you don't get um, a box of Lego and just do that and it all goes together. You've got to take one piece at a time and pull it on top and pull it on top and pull it on top and make sure, make sure it's secure as well. Sometimes you try and put things on too quick and then there's a piece that's lopsided or, or ain't fitted properly and then the whole thing falls over. So just take your time, place each piece bit by bit, make sure it's cemented in the right place, build a good base as well and then pull up to the top and then at the top there's only one. You're a light heavyweight. Light heavyweight. Um, Andre Ward territory, my friend. That's be inspiring now. Looking up, looking to see a champion like that owning it and seeing what he's done in his career and the way that you know he won his last fight, especially. Hundred percent, um, Andre Ward. My respect levels for him are so high because he's done things against the odds again. Um, and all the champions that I see today and in the past, I see them as templates. So you see them as what they've done. I look at little things to say what could they, what could they have done different. Um, even someone like Fred Mayweather, even though his path was his path and he'll probably say he wishes he didn't do it any other way because of what he's done in the sport. Um, but he's trying to teach his younger fighters now to make little adjustments, to not make the same mistakes he made. Um, do I think he would have been the person he is now without doing the things he did? No, because that was his path. So I'm looking at them legendary champions and looking at how they did things and looking at their path at the same time realising that my path's different from everybody else's. Same way Mike Tyson and Customer had their route, um, Roy Jones and his dad had their route, um, Muhammad Ali and his trainer had their route, and all the routes are different. Every single route was different, and they all got their name at the end of the day, so my route's going to be my route. That's the way I see things. I'm getting to the back end of the interview now. What's life like away from boxing? What, what interests and the yard, aside from punching people in the head, TKOs, KOs, and all of that good stuff? <laughs> well, life for me is just, it's just great, literally. And that's what I sometimes I, I keep in my head. I just want to be happy. Um, put, putting boxing aside, um, putting family life aside, or all the things you strive for, happiness for me is key. So sometimes, even when I'm in training, you see me like laughing, giggling. Um, even though I'm sweating and I'm, I'm working hard, we're having fun. Are we, are, Tunde will even tell you as well, I've drilled this into him. We're having fun. Like, no matter what we're doing, we're having fun. Fighting out, we're having fun. Um, so that's my main thing, is to just have fun. I go out and play basketball with my friends. We have little friendly, we make it fun by betting with each other. Little, 
five pound bets. We've even gone as low as having two pound fifty bets. It's just friendly banter, bragging rights. So it was just about having fun. I'm asking that because my missus, as uh, I tell her every interview I'm doing, and she's gone, nah, he's a pretty one, isn't she? He's like, I've gone, I don't know. I don't know about all that. She's gone, nah, babe, like, like has he got a girl? I said, I don't know. And I'm going to ask him though, babe. Is that what you're saying? Ask him. So, woman, missus, any time for that? Because, listen. I... <laughs> for me, it's like, I've been through the stages of um, having girlfriends, etc. cetera. Um, I was with a girl that she was with me from, I think, uh, around my first amateur fight stages. What I wanted to do was build with her. That's, you know, everyone has um, things that they want and they wait, the way they want things to go. But um, a lot, one thing I learned along the way is women bring, or can bring, stress. Especially when you're young and immature. Everyone's immature. Especially when you're young, immature, inexperienced as well. And certain lifestyles. So when you're used to something, when you're used to arguing with somebody, or you've gone from relationship to relationship, you find yourself continuing that cycle. So sometimes you need time to yourself. Like uh, me and my ex girlfriend, we separate from each other. She's doing what she's doing. I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's like, I've now nah, I've got time to myself. And I feel like that's what I'm at. Since, I'm not even saying it's everything to do with her, but since I've got time to myself and to, to sleep by myself, have my own time, have my own space, and f concentrate and give energy to what I want to do in life, I feel like my everything's just elevated 10 times faster. Yeah, everyone, from what we know for a fact, in terms of life on earth, we get one. That's, a, that's the only thing we know as a fact. Some people believe in life, um, life after, but as Anthony Yard, I've got one life, one chance. Um, two years ago, I was 23. So it's like the years go on and it don't wait for nobody. So these times, 25, 26, 27, these are three years that I need to just especially zone into myself, um, get to at least a little level of where I want to get to, or even surpass that. I, I, I can imagine that you are going to have a lot of female fans, my friend, um, which is a good thing because it's always nice to go to boxing and see women in the crowd. I don't like the whole of a man team uh, myself, but you know. Um, before we wrap this up then, if you could predict the next 12 months, this is a question I always ask, um, every sports person I interview, if you could predict the next 12 months and they went perfectly, how would it go for Andy Yard? Anthony Yard would be a world champion. He'd be a millionaire. <laughs> he would have... I'm talking about realistic goals, but yo, he, 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 yeah, he's shooting high. <laughs> he would have went, but he would have went against all the odds. And then sometimes it's like, what I've done as well, that's what saying. you're saying is, um, is high, but what I've done is I've always set above what I think is realistic. And then what's happened has always been what's realistic. Do you get it? So it's like, if I set for what's realistic, I might just underachieve what I wanted to do. So I always say to myself, in two years, I want to unify a belt. And then what will happen within two years, nine times out of 10, I might become a world champion. If I say within a year, I'm going to become world champion, I might be at British level. So it's like, it's about having in your mind what's reality, but shooting for something a bit higher. So then it gives you that extra drive. Thanks for your time, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>